It's that time of the year. We are in the third week of November and I'm sure you must have started looking at what you did this year, what your teams did this year, how the year went by. You must have set your goals in January sometime. Um, and this is the time when you start summarizing everything and you know closing the year. Most organizations have their appraisal cycle from January to December. So it's time. And then people also set up their personal goals in January, you know, New Year resolutions and all that. And I've talked in my blogs many times before, my friends know that you know, I don't believe in New Year resolutions and I believe in goals and, and I'll talk about it some other time. But today's episode is not about personal goals or career goals. I'm talking about organizational goals, enterprise goals. One of my listeners, John Bain, is building a roadmap and he brought this topic up that maybe I should talk about it in one of my episodes. And thank you very much, John, for that. Yes, we are going through the process of summarizing our entire year at this point in time, what we did and whatnot. And uh, yes, we'll start working on the goals in December. We'll start building the roadmap for next year as well. Most organizations must be doing this already. Now, the question is, how do we do that? How do we build um, our organization's roadmap? If you remember, I've talked about classical enterprise architecture and modern enterprise architecture in the past. If not, you should listen to my older episodes. Now, classical enterprise architecture in a very short summary is the old enterprise architecture when, so when uh, John Zachman coined the term enterprise architecture and when the open group created their TOGA framework one to eight, actually, um, they used to believe that enterprise architecture is a overall organizational activity. What that means is that they would look at the entire organization and see where there are improvements required and get it done. And, and so they came up with the concept of baseline architecture and target architecture. Baseline architecture is the current state architecture. How does the organization look like at this point in time from business standpoint, you know, functions, organizations, processes, etc. Data standpoint, what does the what is the data um, and how does it flow through various systems and so on and so forth. Applications and technologies and the interactions therein. But over a period of time, the landscape has changed. When enterprise architecture was originally created, this was the time of the data centers where procurement itself took three months and what have you. Today we have cloud. And we have so many other technologies which basically improve our turnaround times much better. So, so enterprise architecture also needs to evolve. And that's where I've introduced the concept of modern enterprise architecture, where we don't look at the entire organization as one big picture view. Well, we do, but we break it down into smaller components and then we do enterprise architecture on a project to project basis. Now, in the original classical enterprise architecture, they had two concepts called baseline first architecture and target first architecture. Baseline first architecture is where we evaluate the entire landscape and then we try to find the problems within the organization, problems where processes are not efficient or convoluted or, or there are redundant business functions within the organization or there are better, more efficient, more effective ways of doing things uh, in the business. We look at data redundancies, where they are required, where they are not required. We look at application redundancies, you know, where we can standardize applications and use it across the organization and so on and so forth. All these gaps and 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 holes within the organization that can be filled, right? And then based on that, we create a target architecture where we define that, okay, in the target architecture, we are not going to have these challenges. We are going to make them more efficient. We're going to, you know, um, make them more effective. The processes are going to become leaner. The data is going to be less redundant or more redundant depending upon the requirement. The applications are going to be standardized. The technology stack is going to be modernized and so on and so forth. So that's called baseline first architecture. And then they also had a target first architecture in which they would say that, okay, I don't want to worry about what the baseline is at this point in time. I'm going to think about where do I want to go? So for example, I want to move some of my workloads onto the public cloud, or I want to modernize my technology stack, or I want to, you know, get this merger done or this acquisition done, or I want to, and these are small, small projects within the organization, which have a target, right? That let's get this, this, this business function looks like it's, we are not really doing well when, when it comes to this particular business function. It could be a capability that the organization has, and, 
and then the business decides that we want to spin it off as a separate organization so that they can do uh, their business better and we can do our business better and we can leverage the costs and so on and so forth so that becomes a target right that spin off it's a target or move to the public cloud that becomes a target or modernize the tech stack that becomes a target so we know the target architecture and then we do the baseline architecture so that we know what are the changes that we have to bring to achieve the target architecture so 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 you've got two concepts baseline first architecture where we go through a discovery process and then come up with the target architecture based on the discovery and then we have a target first architecture where we do not do a discovery well we do not do a discovery of the current state we do a discovery of the target state first and then once we've defined the target state uh, we define the baseline architecture and go from there so that's one way of creating a roadmap because now that you know the baseline architecture and then you know the target architecture uh you know how to get there you know what are the changes that you need to make to get to the target architecture another thing that we should keep in mind is and this is something that has been introduced into gaf10 by the way which is uh, superior architecture and subordinate architecture right and it was there in togaf 9.2 in an implicit manner that they had uh, three levels of uh, you know the architecture landscape they had strategic architecture segment architecture and capability architecture where strategic architecture is at the executive level segment architecture is at the program or portfolio level and capability architectures is at the project level where the actual realization happens and then you've got solution architecture which we'll talk about some other time so so there was these three layers it's just that the terminology called superior architecture and subordinate architecture has been newly introduced into gaf10 now what superior architecture really means is that let's say that you know you have a business function called manufacturing right you've got a business function called manufacturing now within manufacturing you might have multiple uh, projects what should be your goals within the you know larger manufacturing capability uh, of individual projects should be defined by the direction that manufacturing as a capability has chosen so what is your superior architecture and each subordinate architecture ideally should be aligned with your superior architecture so that's like a check that you should have so once you've defined your baseline and your target architecture you check with your superior architecture and make sure that you are all aligned right your organizational goals and then your departmental goals and then finally your project goals so all of this is properly aligned that's another way now these are all goals and objectives and your road map and all of that and um, john also talks about you know in his post on the telegram group he talks about sort of negative um, kpis like how many times we were there in the news uh, for something bad <laughs> and then that, that sort of can become an indicator that that needs fixing you know and and so on but it's not a bad idea but i would really like to look at it from a capability perspective let's say that you have an enterprise architecture team within the organization and you're a part of it and uh, and one of the objectives ideally should be to become a better and more capable enterprise architecture organization over a period of time but how do you do that agile has the concept of agile retrospectives which is very effectively used uh, to improve the capability of the agile team right to get better over a period of time and we are not talking about project specifically we are talking about the capability of the team itself a similar concept can be used in enterprise architecture now togaf has this concept called enterprise architecture capability maturity model right architecture capability maturity model is a maturity model that has been published by the, the united states department of commerce and uh, uh, a very very interesting tool to improve your maturity over a period of time so what it does is it's got these elements right elements meaning let's say do you have sufficient funding or not or are you doing a documentation properly or not or what kind of enterprise architecture tool are you using to document your enterprise architecture or um or procurement process is aligned with the enterprise architecture team or not or does the enterprise architecture team have an ear of the leadership team or not or any major projects when they get started do they align with enterprise architecture team or not or do they engage the enterprise architecture team or not and so on and so forth and these are all questions that are not yes and no questions they are a a category based question what that means is how mature are you are you level 0 1 2 3 4 5 right uh, if you are at level 0 then you know then the answer basically is no <laughs> right and then if you are at 1 then you are they do engage you at you know 
some periods of time otherwise they don't if they know you and so on so you could define what it means for you to be at level 1 level 2 level 3 level 4 and level 5 and that becomes your uh, sort of um, scale based on which you will understand how mature your enterprise architecture organization is and that's the whole point of maturity models right so let's say that you are for budgets you are at level 2 right for um, process maturity you are at level 3 and so on and so forth now you know what your targets are you want to get to level 4 or you want to get to level 3 but these targets are not um, random you don't want to get to level 3 because you are at level 2 that is not a good enough reason in the modern enterprise architecture perspective you should look at it from a project to project standpoint so if a particular project requires you to be at level 3 for process maturity level 3 for uh, tool maturity level 3 for budgets okay you define that target and then you define where you are and then you see the gaps right that okay for budget you are at level 2 but you need to be at level 3 you for process maturity you are at level 3 and the required level is level 3 so you know we are good so you will exactly know what are the places that you need to fix um to be able to run that project successfully right and that's how you mature over a period of time you take on more and more complex projects you take on more and more bigger projects um, and you do enterprise architecture for that now what is the difference between running a project and doing enterprise architecture while running a project the primary difference is you collect information right into a single enterprise architecture repository so when you run a project let's say let's say you are doing a spin off right a portion of your organization you are spinning it off as a separate organization which means those business functions those business capabilities will now be eliminated which means there is a business impact like for example what are the processes that they were running how were they intermingling with other processes that are running within the organization um, we will have to clearly sever them and separate them from the organization there is a data impact because some data they will take with them some data you'll keep with yourself so you'll have to clearly segregate that data it is possible that all that data is being hosted and being used by a larger application so now that application will also have to be segregated or separately uh, a new instance of that application has to be created which will manage their data and you'll manage your data and then there is a technology impact also right how do you segregate the technology how do you segregate the infrastructure where all these applications and data is hosted so it's a tremendous amount of work but that is a project but when you're doing enterprise architecture on the project you're collecting all this data and you're trying to see um you're trying to understand uh, the processes the business function the organizational structure and then you're documenting all of that in the architecture repository you're looking at all the applications and data you're documenting that in the repository and all these are these interconnections so tomorrow when you create a, a impact analysis report since all this data is interconnected with each other and and is hosted on a single architecture repository it becomes very easy for you to be able to create an impact analysis that okay if this business process is impacted you know how many stakeholders does this business have impact uh, how many how many stakeholders does this uh, this business process have right how many users um if this application is impacted then how many processes are dependent on this application how many stakeholders are dependent on this application what data is dependent on this application how many other applications are dependent on this application and so on and so forth so that gives you that gives you a very clear business insight on to what would happen if you wanted to go through a transformation so that's you know it's, it's a little bit of a segue and you know i didn't want to go there coming back to the whole point of goals and to summarize one is um, you can do baseline architecture and target architecture find the gaps and that becomes your road map always look at your superior architecture to understand where you know the larger organization wants to go and make sure that every project has a baseline and a target architecture and it is aligned with the superior architecture maturity models uh, look at your architecture capability and what are the capabilities that you would like to build Um, to be able to do enterprise architecture for a particular project or a program and that helps you build your architecture roadmap now there are many other things that i would like to talk about uh, there are smart goals and there are kpis and there are okrs uh, and so on and so forth but that's all the time that i have 
uh, on today's episode i hope you enjoyed the episode if you did then um, then um, don't forget to like share and subscribe i have a question for you as well today's episode was a little bit theoretical uh, i do believe that theory ultimately uh, becomes a practical implementation but what are your views about how you set up your architecture roadmap or forget architecture how do you set up your business roadmap for the next year what are the things that you keep in mind how do you understand what the business needs and and build the roadmap i would like to hear your thoughts about it talk to me on linkedin on on youtube on the telegram group that we have on the linkedin group that we have i would love to hear your thoughts Once again I would like to remind you that Enterprise Architecture Radio is not just a podcast it is a collaboration platform where the enterprise architecture community comes together and talks to each other so keep the conversations going share your ideas learn from each other guide each other but most importantly have fun